This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Exactware Training, the creators of Xactimate X1 and Xactimate Mobile. Get certified as an Xactimate expert right now at the link in the description below. What does a daily adjuster do? What is the difference between a daily adjuster and a catastrophe adjuster? And the simplest answer to that is, is that a catastrophe adjuster, it's in the name, right? Um, it's easy to, to figure out what they do. And that is, is that anytime there's a catastrophe, the catastrophe adjuster gets called, they jump in their truck and they drive wherever, they go wherever, they jump on a plane and they go wherever, right? Um, usually, not always, um, there's, uh, there's been some really, really wonderful exceptions to this in, in my career that I was like, I can't, I'm so glad I got deployed and I got to stay at home. 99% of the time, you're not staying at home. 90, vast majority of the time, right? Um, you're staying in a hotel, or if you got an RV, you're taking an RV or an Airbnb, or sleeping on a friend's couch, or maybe you have a relative that lives in that town, that happens, right? You got friends, um, and I'm paying them, right, to stay in their place. I'm gonna be like, I'll give you a, this much a month or this much a week or whatever it is. And they're happy to, and I'll buy groceries, you know, if it's somebody I know, um, right? So a catastrophe adjuster is somebody who's going to generally chase storms, right? Um, and it's almost always storm work, right? Occasional wildfire, but those aren't not, they're not nearly as common as windstorm and hail. Hail is probably the, the number one thing. If you're gonna do a volume of claims and, and really make great money as, an, as a cap adjuster, you're doing hail by and large, right? Um, and you're doing property. So I'm talking about property adjusters, which property being houses, um, structures, personal property, uh, commercial buildings, condos, apartment buildings, all that kind of stuff, right? It's not vehicles, not boats, not airplanes, not. And, and also, we're also doing farm and ranch, so farm buildings, farm out buildings, um, and farm equipment a lot of the time. So like combines and that kind of thing, which is, I like getting those kind of claims because they're interesting. Farmers are kind of interesting to talk to a lot of the time. So, but, but what's a daily adjuster, right? Well, how's, well, how's a daily adjuster different than a cat adjuster? The primary difference is that the daily adjuster is somebody who's going to, um, is, is going to do, uh, what we call daily claims, which the, the difference is, is that a daily claim is like the toilet overflows or there's a, it was a kitchen fire, right? There's just, it's just regular old accidental things that happen in a person's house or around, in or around their house or property, right? So those are daily claims is, is basically that, right? Vandalism, um, damage if there was a burglary, um, that kind of stuff, right? And it's usually when you go on CAT, you're gonna get, you know, you're gonna end up by the end of the storm with 200 hail claims, right? All on one side of town and the houses are pretty similar, right? So there's highly repetitive um, and you kind of get really get into a groove with them and you start meeting the same contractors and all this kind of stuff. Um, on daily claims, you are at home a lot of the time. You can do what we call deploy dailies, which is where if you live in Dallas and you call your IA firm and you say, hey, you got any place in the country where you've got some daily work that you're, you're, you need help with, whatever. You know, and if I'm not licensed there, I'll get licensed there, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, actually we got some stuff for Liberty Mutual up in Seattle. Wanna go? Sure, and then you're up there doing daily claims for Alacrity for Liberty Mutual, right? Um, but by and large, a, a daily adjuster is, not, is gonna be somebody who doesn't travel and they're going to stay home and run claims. Um, one of the fundamental differences between doing catastrophe work and doing daily work, aside from the fact that the claims are different, is that as a catastrophe adjuster, pilot calls me and says, hey, go work American Family Storm, and I go work American Family for pilot until the claims are done and then I go home, right? And then I'm done until they call me or somebody else calls me, and then I go work for that company and that carrier until those claims are done and then I go home and wait, right? And then over the winter, when the, nothing's really going on, then I just, I do something else or whatever. I, I probably wanna keep working just so I can protect the money that I made over the summer. On the daily side, you may get uh, a, a much lower volume of claims per client, right? So in other words, you're gonna try to build a, what they, we, they call it like building a business, a daily business. It's different than CAT, and this is a pretty fundamental difference. CAT, one at a time. 
one 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 IA firm working one one carrier's claims at a time. Do not try to do more than one. It's a fail. It's you'll get blacklisted if you try to do that. Don't do it. But on the other hand, for for daily work, it's kind of required to do that because you know this company may say, all right, well I can you know all we have for daily work in, in your area is I can give you about two claims a week, or I can give you three claims every two weeks or something like that, right? Which is not enough to live on, right? It's probably not bad money because the claims are gonna be, they could be big claims. Like be, any claim that comes in, you're gonna get it, right? For the most part, uh, up to your, you know, depending on how experienced you are, right? Um, so what you have to do is you say, all right, well, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, maybe I'm gonna explore within this company, I'm gonna say, uh, maybe you're working for Mid-America Cat and you're like, okay, I wanna do daily, They've got some stuff for American Family in this in my area, and they've got some stuff for the Hartford or whoever, right? It's just I'm just making picking names out of it, out of the air, right? And so I can get three um, every two weeks from AmFam, and then I can get one a week from the Hartford, and then but that's all I got, right? So maybe I have to th I'm going to take it, right? And th when those claims come in, I'm going to I'm going to do them, but then I have to also have to go to another IA firm and say, what do you got in my area for daily stuff? And they'll say, oh, we can give you four a week for this company, right? So I'm gonna take that. And so you start to build up a, a sort of a book of business where you're working for one to maybe three or four IA firms, right? Again, it totally depends on where you're at in the country. Maybe it's, you, one will keep you more busier than you ever wanna be. And maybe in another part of the country, you gotta take 10, right? And they all give you one a week. Um, but, you know, all that said, you wanna probably try to do between six and maybe at the absolute max, 15 claims a week, right? Daily claims, whole different ballpark than CAT. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try to do, you know, I'm not gonna do, I might, I might do 15 claims over two days on CAT, but on daily, I'm gonna probably be like, it's gonna be uh, extremely busy for me to try to do 15 claims in one week on doing dailies, especially if I show up at one and it's, I'm gonna be there for four hours, right? Just because it's a large water loss or there's a lot of smoke damage and fire and whatever. So they're, and they can be totally different. Um, you're, with the cat stuff, you're doing probably, you're doing, doing one insurance company with one, maybe two or three total policies that you have to deal with, right? Over here, and one peril, hail, right, or wind, but over here it's every, every possible thing. It's a bunch of different insurance companies and it's, you know, so it's all, it could be anything, right? You could have, I had claims where there was damage from flashbangs from SWAT teams going through, thrown through windows and there's damage on the inside of the house from flashbangs, right? Um, on a certain type of policy, and I gotta try to tease out on the policy whether or not that's covered, right? And how to pay for it. Um, so, and you'll have fire, you'll have vandalism, you know, vehicle damage, right? Airplane crashes into the side of the condo building or, you know, Drunk driver at 11 o'clock in the morning, you'll see, I mean, it's, you know, unfortunately, there are people are out there, so you gotta be careful in general, you know, comes peeling around, th rooster tailing through the yard and takes out the corner of the house, knocks a bunch of brick off the house and runs down a bunch of trees and just totally shreds the yard, right? Um, that's covered, but it's got it, but you gotta like look in the policy and depending on what policy they have, it depends on how that you're gonna be able to pay for it, right? So these are way more complex. So you're not doing, you're gonna build up you know, like I mentioned previously, you know, you're gonna you're gonna build up a volume of claims, but only based on what you can reasonably, realistically close by keeping high quality. And on the daily side, it's gonna be it's gonna be a much much lower number. But again, these can be big big claims, and so um, whether or not it's you make a better living as a cat adjuster or a daily adjuster, um, I wouldn't say that one or the other plays second fiddle. They're, they're almost two different kinds of, or really two different kinds of work. And I think if you're if you're uh, um, you're creative, you got uh, entrepreneurial spirit, and you got persistence and grit, and you're willing to um, look for efficiencies in every place that you can, you can do really, really, really well doing either one. Right? If you don't want to travel, um, then you kind of have to go over here. Problem is. This is the, the caveat. If you're new and you're watching this, you're like, oh, daily sounds great. I want to say, I don't want to travel. I just want to stay home and be with my family and da, 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 da. Problem is, is if as a brand new adjuster, most, not all, 
but most of the eye firms and carriers don't want you touching daily claims. And the reason why is because they're so complex. There's, you know, one claim can trigger a whole bunch of parts of the policy, including ALE, right? Um, personal property, is there, are there special endorsements on this policy? There may be some, you know, maybe a, you might get a claim that was previously opened and has priors and has, it's, and it's, or it's just a large loss and you have to deal with a general contractor. Um, if you don't have any experience, you're, you're gonna be lost on a lot of the daily, daily type claims, right? So that's, you can't really say, well, you know, pick and cat or daily, um, the, the usual route, and this is something I, I, I talk about a lot, and I've, it's, it's just, the, it is the usual route. Um, as long as I've been an adjuster since the 90s, start with, with cat, suck it up, right? Um, walk the roofs, do the whole nine yards, get out there and get sweaty, and learn the claims process and learn how to talk to contractors and learn how to how to deal with the, the, your phone, get good and Xactimate, learn how to scope a loss and be efficient at it, right? Learn how to take good high quality photos, clear photos, and, and to put together a really high quality file in a repetitious, um, relatively easy uh, environment where every claim is it's hail, 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 hail's covered no matter what, with. I can't think of an exception, there may be one. Hail's always covered to, for most things that it hits, right? It's easy, you don't have to make a coverage decision on every single one. Occasionally one will pop up with something weird, but by and large it's gonna be you really, really drilling into your brain, building muscle memory um, in the claims process. And once you get a storm or two or three under your belt and you're getting up to where you can close four or five claims a day pretty easily and you're building good relationships, then that's when you can be like, oh, by the way, do you have any daily opportunities? I'd be interested in doing some daily. And I can't think of an IA firm, um, unless they have a, a hard limit that you have, have to have at least a year's experience, once you've got a bunch of claims under your belt and they know you and they know your work product, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, sure. You sure you don't wanna keep doing CAT? Cause we love you on CAT, but if you wanna do, do, do daily, then maybe we can figure out a way to get you over on daily, right? And then that's when you can kind of move over to daily. Um, I know people don't, they, everybody wants to stay home, everybody wants to not climb roofs and everything like that, um, but this is the job, right? And you're outside, even on, on daily claims, a uh, fraction of these you're gonna be climbing on roofs because most of them aren't roof claims. Some of them are, certainly, but most of them are water claims or fire claims, by and large, for, depending, again, where you go or where you're at in the country, mostly water claims with fire and then other stuff, right? You're not gonna be climbing roofs a bunch, but you kind of have to work your way up to it, right? You can't just like jump straight into this and expect to be making, and, they, they, and they're gonna bill more probably because they're gonna be bigger claims usually. Um, this is, you kind of have to go through a little bit of the trial by fire um, in order to, it's kind of the gateway into the world of claims. And once you do this, then you can transfer, transition over to this if you want to, or keep doing this. You might be like, you know what? I didn't want to do cat, but I did cat a couple of times and I've discovered that I absolutely loved it. Right, that kind of happened to me. Right, I, I was like my first storm. Um, I was excited to go, um, but when I got done with that storm, I vowed I would never do claims again because it was so stressful. And the next storm that they called me on, I went and I was off to the races. So, um, but yeah, so that's 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 basically what a daily adjuster is. A daily adjuster is somebody that handles um, any claim that comes in in a typical area. And they may have you there because some that like the insurance company had somebody that was working there and then that person quit. And now they're spending, they gotta spend a bunch of time recruiting somebody else to put in that area. So they need, somebody still has to do the claims. You're that guy or gal, right? It could be for a myriad of reasons. Some, some insurance companies don't have adjusters, right? Some smaller regional companies, they have zero adjusters, right? Um, there are even some opportunities for you to work directly to with the carrier and skip the eye firm. Some some carriers, smaller regional ones, um, and you really have to dig and look for them, um, they don't, they don't, they won't work through IA firms. They'll just, they'll just, you guys work out a deal between each other and they will pay you, invoice you directly and then you're not splitting it with anybody, right? Which is probably a pretty cool deal. Um, and you can develop a good relationship with, with companies that way as well because you're doing direct. And I would say the best way to, uh, to answer this question, right? Because like I said, there are exceptions to this rule where you gotta go into CAD and then come over to daily. Maybe you can go, you can go straight to, to daily, possibly. Depends on your other like world career experience. Um, my best advice for you is to go to um, 
I would go to the NAIIA conference um, and become a member of those guys. Well, you might be able to become a member, but you, I would go to, try to go to that conference. Um, and that's NAIIA.com. Take a look, at, t- look into those guys. Definitely, without question, I say this all the time, um, go to the NACA Convention, National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters, and it's every January um, in Nevada somewhere. It's, it's Reno that's coming up, but it was in, it's been in Vegas for the last several years. Um, and all the IA firms are going to be there. Um, there really won't be any carriers at that one. There'll be more carriers. There'll be some carriers at NAIA. And go to PLRB as well if you, if you can get in. I haven't gone to that conference. I don't know. The parameters are, but I know that there's lots and lots and lots and lots of carriers there. And you may be able to just go booth to booth and be like, hey, I'm an adjuster. Do you hire adjusters? You know, do you use an IA firm? Who do you use? Or if you don't, here's my card or let's talk about it, right? Um, networking is pretty critical with any of this stuff. But again, daily adjusting, not a bad way to go. And you can make, you know, everybody's like, oh, you got to work hurricanes, da da da. You know, you maybe you have to work a hurricane or two or, or do a hurricane and then do a two or three storms after that um, to get some experience, and then you transfer transition over to doing daily work and just stay home or do deploy dailies, right? Um, but this this requires knowledge. You got you got to have some some claim skills before you can just jump straight to daily. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.